today we will start with chapter number 10. I remember you had a lot of questions related to straight lines and the equation of lines. I hope you will be more clear after we explain what a straight line and its equation is. So in this chapter, we will deal with straight lines and the quadratic equations up to one point, not as extended as it was in the previous curriculums. What are straight lines? Firstly, we will start with a, a real life situation. Let us look at the problem. <coughs> Mr. Kiel owns a boat hire company. If Mr. Kiel makes a flat charge of $40 and then another $15 per hour of hire, you can find the formula for the total cost Y dollars after a higher time of X hours. So you have a fixed flat charge that you should pay at the moment that you are hiring a boat. And then for each hour that passes, you should pay $15, $15 for each hour. So in total, you will pay $40 plus 15 times X. And X here represents the number of hours that passes that you will use the boat that you are hiring, okay? So as a result, the total cost will be flat charge, so this $40 is for sure given paid at the moment that you are hiring the boat, plus the total charge for all the hours that you are using. So you can use this formula, look at the formula, y equals 40 plus 15 times x, which may be rearranged and written as y equals 15x plus 40. Okay, how will you understand this formula? If you are using you are hiring this boat and you are using only for one hour, then what will be the cost that you will pay? 15 times one plus 40, so $55. If you are using two hours, the cost will be 15 times two plus 40, $70. If you are using three hours, then 15 times three plus 40, $85. So what we notice here, from each number in each step, you are adding $15 because what changes is, what changes there is only the number of hours, isn't it? So from one step to another, you are just adding the cost of one more hour. So if you try using this logic and try to complete all the, this table below up to nine hours, then you will have 55, then 70, then 85, then 100, then 115, then 130, then 145, and so on. So you are adding 15 to each of them. What do we notice here is that we are adding a constant amount to each step to obtain the following one. This should remind you the sequences, isn't it? That we learned in the past lessons. So if you are adding 15 to each number to obtain the following one, then in the nth term formula, you should have 15 times n. Do you remember 15n? Then check one of the numbers to see what is the following part of the formula. For n equals one, 15n is 15, but the first number is not 15, it is 55, so you should add 40. 15n plus 40 is the formula, which actually is the formula that we have mentioned here in the previous slide. So 15, not n, but 15x plus 40 is the formula for finding the total cost, which is represented by y. In this equation, you have two variables, x and y. x is the number of hours, and it is the independent variable, while y depends on the value that you are giving to x, changes according to x. If you try to represent all these pairs of numbers that are in this table on the coordinate plane, you would have a graph like this. Look at this graph. 
In the x-axis, you have the number of hours. For example, for hour one, what was the value? If you remember, it was 55. So you find the point which corresponds to $55 in the y-axis. So 155 is represented by this first point. Then 270 is represented by this. Then 385, 400, and so on. So if you see, you can notice that all the nine points are the graphical representations of the nine points of this table. Okay, 155, 270, 385. Be careful. We can easily notice that all these points are on the same line. You just need to place the ruler above them and you can see that you can draw a straight line which passes through all the nine points. And even if you find other values in this table which are after nine, so find for 10, 11, 12 and whatever, other natural numbers that follow, you will find other points in this part which will be again on the same straight line, this red line. Okay, so what is it? We notice that the graph of this kind of equation, which kind of equation? Y equals 15x plus 40 is a straight line. Okay, and that also represents the equation, this formula represents the equation of the line. So every, actually every equation of this form in which you have y equals a number times x plus another constant number will have a graph which is a straight line. What are the properties of that straight line? We will deal in the following slides. Let us look at some worked examples. A straight line has the equation y equals 2x plus 3. Construct a table of values for x and y and draw the line on a label pair of x's. Use integer values of x from minus 3 up to 2. So it is determining that the values of x that you should give in the table should be from minus 3 up to 2. So let us write all the integers, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. And let us substitute all these values in x in order to find the value of y. So if x is minus 3, 2 times minus 3, minus 6. Plus 3, minus 3. 2 times minus 2, minus 4. Minus 4 plus 3, minus 1. So when you substitute all these values, you will find the respective y values and place them in the table. Now as we did in the previous example, let us try to plot on the coordinate plane, on the coordinate axis, all these pairs, minus 3, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, 1, 0, 3, and so on. And see what it looks like. The minus x minus 3, y minus 3, that is point, minus 3, minus 3. Minus 2 minus 1 is this point. Minus 1, 1 is this point. Okay. 0, 3 is this point. 1, 5 is this. 2, 7 is this. So again, we can notice that all the points are on a straight line. Okay. So be careful. In some cases, maybe you will make some mistakes while filling this table you may find a different value of y, not the correct one. So when you place all the points on the graph, you should notice that if one of the points is outside the line on which all the other points lie on, then check again that point because maybe you have found the wrong result for y because all the points should be on the same straight line. Okay, that line is the graph of the given equation. In this case, y equals 2x plus 3. In the following example, the equation changes. It is y equals minus x plus 3. You should draw the line for values of x between minus 2 and 5. So again, 
let us write all the integer values of x from minus 2 up to 5. How many of them? 8 of them, isn't it? For each value of x, you will substitute it instead of x and find the corresponding value of y. So for x1, for example, let us give a positive value, minus 1 plus 3 plus 2, isn't it? So it's correct. For x3, minus 3 plus 3, 0. So again, it's correct. After finding all the pairs, just do as in the previous example, find plot all the points, the pairs, minus 2, 5. Where is minus 2? X minus 2, this is the x-axis. Y-axis is the vertical one. So X minus 2, Y, 5. Yes, that is the point. Minus 1, 4. That is the point. 0, 3. That is the point. 1, 2. That is the point. So after finding all the points, just join them with this line, which will be a straight line again. Always, that line is a straight line. Okay. So, as a summary, to draw a graph from its equation, draw up a table of values and fill in the x and y coordinates of at least three points. Why at least three points? Actually, even with two points is enough, but it sa says three points for you to be sure that you have found three points which are collinear points. They are on the same line. Then draw up and label your set of axes for the range of y values we ha you have worked out. What does this mean? For example, you fill the table here and you see that the values of x are changing from minus two up to five. After finding the values of y from 5 up to minus 2, you don't need to draw the part of y which is below minus 2 because you are looking at the table that you don't need any value which is less than minus 2. And for the positive part of y, you know you have the greatest y which is 5. So you don't need to draw the part which is above 5. That's why what it means in the second step. In the third, Plot each point on the number line. So just plot all the points, so purple points that we have plotted there, here, this one, and then join them by this straight line. The last step is drawing the straight line. Okay. Now what is the gradient? The gradient of the line tells you how steep the line is. Steep means the angle of the line. Here is C, and division of C. For every one unit moved to the right, the gradient will tell you how much the line moves up or down. It will move up if it is placed in this position, or it will move down it is if it is in this kind of angle. Okay? When graphs are parallel to each other, they have the same gradient. Actually, you will see from the examples that the gradient is the coefficient of x in the formula of the equation. So in the previous equations here, the gradient, what is the coefficient of x? Minus 1. So the gradient is minus 1. Okay. Or in the previous one again, what is the gradient of this equation? 2. For x, before x, you have the coefficient 2. That also shows the gradient of the equation. Actually, how can you find that gradient? That's what we will deal. Let us firstly look at vertical and horizontal lines. Let us look at these two examples. You have a vertical line, this red one, and the horizontal line, the purple one. Look at the equation of the vertical line. x equals 3. What does it mean? Why is it like that? Because every point on this line, look at the red line, every point on this line has, has which coordinate x? For example, I place the mouse here. The coordinate x of this point is what? 3. What about the coordinate y? 1. But x is 3 always. I go above in the same line, x is again 3. What changes is the value of y. It became 2. I go above, x is again 3. y became 3. So in all the points of this line, x is always 3. That's why the equation of this line is 
straight. Not only for this, but for all vertical lines, the form of the equation is always x equals a number. What number? The number which this line intersects the x-axis. The same logic is for the horizontal lines. All the horizontal lines have the equation y equals a number. Which number? The number that the line intersects the y-axis. And again, you can explain using the same logic. Every point in this purple line has the y-coordinate minus 2. When we move to the right, we are increasing the x-coordinate. When we move to the left, we are decreasing the x-coordinate. But y-coordinate? always is minus 2. Where? In the purple line. The gradient of the horizontal line is always 0. Okay? While the gradient of the vertical line doesn't exist. doesn't have any gradient. Okay. Lines that are neither vertical nor horizontal. Most of our lines will be neither vertical nor horizontal, like in the two examples that we saw in the first slides. Let us start with one of the two. We have a graph A, which is the red one, and we have a graph B, which is the blue one. Let us look at the graph A. We have some arrows here. Look, when x changes, look, when x changes from zero to 2, so we are increasing x by 2, the value of y changes from 2 up to 10. So it is the change in x from 0 up to 2. It is increasing by 2 units, isn't it? What is the change in y from 2 up to 10? It is increasing by 8 units. All you need to do to find the gradient is to make this ratio between the y change over the x increase. So x increased by 2, y changed by plus 8 units. So 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. That 4 is the gradient of this equation. Okay? Of this line, sorry. This line has the gradient 4. So actually, when you find the equation of this line, you will have y equals 4x plus something, plus a number. Okay. For the graph B, what is the y change? y change minus 9. He has taken to any two points. You can take any other two points that you wish. This is the first point. This is the second point. So what is the x increase from this to this? Let's go on to the right. 0 up to... 4. So it is increasing by 4 units. What about the y change? Be careful. You are decreasing y because you are going below from this step to the last point. How many units? From 2 up to minus 7. How many? Minus 7 minus 2 minus 9 units. Okay, so here you have the, again a y change that is decreasing. That's why it is shown by minus 9 units, okay, as we are moving down. So, again, you are using the same formula. Y changes minus 9, X increases 4. Minus 9 over 4 is minus 2.25. Or you can even leave it like this. It, is, it cannot be simplified anymore, this fraction. So, if you... Write the first part of the formula of the equation of this line. It will be y equals minus 9 over 4 times x plus any number that will follow. And we will learn how to find that number. The most important part here is finding the gradient of a given line in a graph. That is how we find. So y change over x increase. Calculate the gradient of each line, give your answer as a whole number or fraction in its lowest terms. So let us look at the first example. It's, it has taken two points, this starting point and this terminating point, point. We are moving to go to this part. How do you move horizontally? From 2 up to 4, isn't it? From 2 up to 4. How many units? Two units increase in the x-axis. Be careful. 
What about in the y-axis? From 4 up to 10, you are again increasing. How many units from 4 up to 10? Plus 6 units. So 6 over 2 is equal to 3. 3 is the gradient of the first example, okay, of the first graph. What about the second graph? In the second graph, you can see that this kind of inclination shows that you may, must have a negative gradient result. Let us see. From this point to this point, you are increasing two units again. So be careful. Every time you take initial point, the one which is at the left, and terminal point, the one which is at the right, in order to have an X increase, because always you should find in the denominator the X increase. So 2 to 4, how many units is X increasing? Plus 2. What about Y? Y goes down, is decreasing from 1 to 0. From 1 to 0. So minus 1. Minus 1 over what? Over 2, because the change in X was plus 2. So minus 1 over 2 is the gradient in the second. Do you notice in the first one that the inclination was up to the right, the gradient was positive. In the second, the gradient is negative. Inclination is down to the right. Okay? And if you look at the solutions, the ones that we solved are, were this results. So 6 over 2 is 3 and minus 1 over 2. After some points, you don't need to look at the graph. I explained using the graph for you to understand the logic of finding the gradient. Actually, even if you take only initial point and terminal point and do the differences, how? 10 minus 4 over 4 minus 2. You will get, again, the same results. Look, 0 minus 1 over 4 minus 2. Again, same result. Okay. So even if you just make the application of the formula using initial and terminal points, by not looking at the graph, you can find the correct result of the gradient. And this last example, look, here it is using the formula that I just told you in the previous slide. Calculate the gradient of the line that passes through these points. So even if you don't have the graph, you just know the two points, initial and terminal point. So what you do is 17 minus 5 over 7 minus 3. Look at the formula. 17 minus 5 over 7 minus 3. What is it? 12 over 4, which is equal to 3. So the gradient in this line, or the inclination of this, this line is 3. Okay? And that is all.